All right. Um, welcome to episode six of Zooming with Dan. Um, last week, I had a fantastic chat with Peter Simcoe and Russell Lowe. They're both incredible men who do so much for the M&D community through their rock off and tee off M&D events. It was certainly a first for our organization to be presented with a fundraising check via Zoom. What COVID-19 has done to us all. The fact it was a check to the value of more than $70,000 was simply incredible. Mm. And it was a thrill to be a part of such a special moment. And we, want, we recognize all the hard work Peter Simcoe and his amazing team um, put into this year's rock off event that was ultimately and unfortunately canceled due to the coronavirus. We can't wait to see what 2021 has in store. Pete has let us know he's got a pretty amazing act, but no one has a chance of finding that out until later in the year at, at best. But March 2021, we hope Rock Off M&D will be back. I'm absolutely delighted to have David Steele with me tonight. Um, tonight, we delve into the core of what M&D Victoria is all about. The organisation exists to help support people like David and all Victorians living with MND. Tonight, oh, sorry, David was dealt the roughest of hands six months ago today, in fact, November 28, when he received the horrible news that he had, he had motor neuron disease. David will talk more about his story soon, but David is just like everyone else I have met with this horrible disease. David is a legend. There's no two, two ways about it. David doesn't deserve to have this disease. No one deserves to have MND, be diagnosed with MND. But David continues to live his life in the best way he can. Yes, he has a lot of rough days, but I've never heard him complain or ask why me. Um, and everyone I've met with MND is exactly the same. David is still working, um, enjoying life, and, and he's facing the new challenges head on. David is not only living with MND, but he decided early on um, in the piece that he wanted to help others currently living with the disease. So he and a great team at Cummins Diesel, where he, he works and he's worked there for a long, long time, decided to do some pretty major fundraising for MND Victoria. We'll go into that a little later on. David is one of 440 people currently living with MND in Victoria. It's an honour to have David on tonight to share his story and he actually said to me a little earlier on if his story can help one other person in some way that'll do him so welcome david um, thanks mate how about you tell us a bit about you you know you as a person what you, you know your work life i know you've been at cummins for mm -hmm. i think more years than i've been alive but yeah. let's yeah talk about you for a second um uh, 50 year old, turned 50 last year in September. Um, been working most of my life, 30 years and a bit more for a company called Cummins Diesel. Originally from Mount Gambier, South Australia. Uh, moved over here when I was about 24. Met my wife, got married. Um, two kids. Uh, one's a chef, Jason, 23. And my youngest, Adam, 20, has just started an apprenticeship as an electrician. Um, my wife is sort of in between jobs at the moment with her, well, her name's Kim and she was uh, trying to get a job and when all this sort of lockdown um, came to so she's sort of still hunting around for something uh, but obviously sort of taking a bit of care of me which is uh, good as well so um, yeah I've, uh, <clears throat> so I'm sort of still working and up until the diagnosis was loved holidays, pretty active, a lot of walking, um, playing with the kids, a lot of that sort of thing. And not being able to sort of, and having the news given to me regarding MND sort of was the hardest hit for me. Um, so coming from being a pretty active sort of person to trying to get my head wrapped around what's going on with this has, has sort of been pretty hard. and not even really knowing what it was. Uh, in the last six months, I've learned a hell of a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, look, I'm, I live out in the Western suburbs, everyday sort of bloke, husband, you know, father, 
um, work colleague, friend. Um, yeah, that's that's it. I'm a spare parts manager, so I sell truck parts down in Laverton, and yeah. that's pretty much me. Typical Aussie bloke. Uh, uh, that's the way I describe you. And mm -hmm. um, look, I mentioned earlier on that you know you were diagnosed six months ago today. Yeah. I, you know, I know a bit about the story, and and I know how how hard that time was for you, and and the months obviously after the fact. But yeah. how about you take us back to to that fateful day? We um, <clears throat> we just got Kim and myself. We got back off a holiday from in Hawaii this time about September last year and I sort of noticed that my walking was a bit different to what it was I was sort of getting a bit of discomfort in the left leg and I thought once I get back from holidays I'll get that checked out so I went off to a got a referral to go and see a, um, a foot doctor and he said it was he diagnosed me with what he thought was called drop foot and there might be something a bit more there, so he sent me off to get a um, nerve study done uh, down in Footscray. So I went off and got that done with a neurologist down there. Um, he did a heap of, obviously we all know what the testing's about, a lot of probes and shocks and what have you. And um, six weeks was the wait period from the time I was tested to when I went back to see him. Uh, we went back to see him again on the 28th of uh, November last year, he did the study again on me uh, just to confirm, and then um, told me that this was the diagnosis. Not sort of knowing a lot about it then, I didn't really get much of a reaction straight away. I was just lying on a, an examination table there and the examination bed, and I looked over to my wife who was sitting there in front of the neurologist and she started sort of crying. And then I sort of realized that I knew that her grandfather had passed away with MND as well. Um, and that sort of, and then she sort of looked at me and I thought, oh, it's probably a bit more serious than it should be. Um, I sort of really didn't sort of, it didn't hit home. Um, I think to talk to the doctor, he said, talked about things like quality of life and things like that. And I'm thinking it's pretty heavy. Um, I still had no real emotion, which seems strange, but I don't know, maybe a delayed reaction, I'm not sure. Um, went out, paid the exorbitant bill as you do when you go and see these specialists, um, got out into the car park, got in the car and decided to drive home. Um, talking to Kim about it and I said, oh look, I better go and talk to my boss. So I called in on the way home into Laverton and went and spoke to my boss and um, as soon as I walked into his office, we all sort of broke down and started crying about things and so did the boss. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I sort of realised then that it was a, a pretty serious thing. Um, and, you know, I was, that's when I sort of started thinking of names like Neil Danaher and, and who had this and I didn't really know anybody else. <clears throat> so, trying to think about who to share this story with and, and who else was out there that could help me deal with this was some of the things that were so far away from me at that time. It was, um, it just felt, I suppose, real, it was surreal. It was a very dark feeling. Once I found out a little bit about it, read a few facts about it. One thing I didn't do was look at the computer. I, I still haven't looked at the computer about what it is. I just put my trust in the specialists and, you know, MD Victoria to, you know, the facts. And that's all I'm interested in. Um, you know, it's, I share those facts. I share those um, things I find out with my family. There was no one in my support group that uh, are not aware of what's going on. I share all my stories with them. I share the what's going on with me with them. Uh, so we don't hide anything from any of our friends, family. They're all up to date with my treatment, what's going on. Um, but I think after the Thursday I got diagnosed, I went back to work on the Friday. God knows why I did that. But to me, it was just business as usual. Um, I walked into work, uh, sort of sat in my chair, 
And then the boss came in and told me to go home, and um, which I did. I don't know why I went to work, but it's what I'd done for the last 30 years. So I thought it was what I was still keep doing. Um, yeah, so after that, I had probably two, three weeks off to kind of fathom what's going on. And I got into a really sort of dark, dark place there. It was um, real, I've been a very organised sort of person, but having this threw so much chaos at me, um, I couldn't understand what was going on with it, why, and so many questions, but I wanted to sort of, I wanted to find out a lot, but I didn't want to find out. Yeah. You know? So um, it was, you know, it was leading into that Christmas period where there was no appointments available for specialists. And it was a sort of like a, I suppose, a six or five or six weeks leading up to Christmas then into the new year. And it was nearly two months before I actually got some, you know, some contact with um, Bowen and, and those sorts of specialists and felt like something was happening. So in the meantime, I'd spoken to come down to M&D Victoria, I think it was an early, it might have been sort of sometime in December maybe, and I spoke to Leslie and um, my wife and I came into M&D Victoria and met with her and after a phone call and she met with me and again, I sat there crying in the couch in the front office there and I'm um, trying to wrap my head around it, and so yeah, we've um, we've been dealing with you know the the emotion side of things every day, but it's it's getting easier. Like I said, it's six months down the track now, and um, yeah, things are you know things are okay. Um, you know, it's just that initial shock. Um, it's scary. It's daunting. Uh, you know, yeah. A lot of emotions, a lot of thoughts go through your head, your friends, your family. When am I going to see my kids get married, grandchildren? So many things you think, well, you know, you, you, your brain is hardwired to go to the finality of things. And I just sort of had to try and pull myself back from that to try and just one day at a time. That was the hardest bit. And, yeah. you know, was was trying to calm down, I suppose. Yeah. It was, I suppose it was a silly way of putting it, but that's what it was. It was just a, a big black cloud. And then, you know, once I sort of pulled my head in a bit and realised what was going on and understood that there was support out there and, you know, people around me, it, it really sort of pulled me out of where I was. So and now I'm talking on here. <laughs> and look, you know, I definitely... Six uh... months ago, six months ago, I wouldn't have been, you know, like... It's, it's a big turnaround, I think. So I'm happy. Yeah, and well, I, I met you what a few months ago now, and, yeah. and I'd heard all about that story about you, you know, you, you ringing the office up and speaking to Leslie. And you just needed to speak to someone, wasn't it? You, you just I, yeah, um, I had no one to talk to. So and I didn't know yeah. where to turn. An amazing <laughs> thing, and you obviously spoke to Leslie, and mm. um, and moving forward. So that time I met you, you know, you're in great spirits, you're at work and mm. um, yeah, just obviously I didn't know you through that period, but yeah. um, you obviously came out of it uh, and yeah, like a lot of people, you, the reality had set in and, and you were back to living that positive life. And, you know, I think for me, yeah, it was a privilege to meet you in your work environment. Yeah. And by that stage, you'd been connected to, um, your now current M&D advisor, Ruth. So Ruth, maybe touch, well, on, yes. touch on Ruth yeah. and, and what, what she does for you and the family. Well, yeah, my, my um, M&D advisor, Ruth McAvoy, she's, um, she's one in a million, that lady. She's absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Um, so suited to the position she's got. She's caring. She's considerate. Um, prompt, you know, she's everything you'd expect a support person to be um, and some, you know, so nothing is too much of a problem. The less I have to do, the better in her books, which is great because without her support and her guidance, I wouldn't have been able to achieve half the stuff that I've done. Things like NDIS and 
carers. I just didn't even know any of that existed. So if it wasn't for Ruth taking the ball with that and getting me signed up and I wouldn't have known where to start. It was just a lot of paperwork that, you know, was sort of coming at me left, right and centre. And for her to say, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. And, you know, to, even to this day, it's she's still sort of, I was talking to her this week, we've got some, got a few things happening at the moment with occupational therapists and, and what have you, and a, um, a gardener, you know, that she's taking care of all that through the NIS plan. And yeah, it's something's happening every day and something for the better. And that's, you know, mainly through Ruth, you know, and, and my wife, Kim, you know, she's, they got on really well and, you know, she's met the family. Um, but yeah, she's a, a wonderful person. And, you know, it's a um, lifelong friend. Yeah, really love nice. it. Yeah, well, look, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, we spoke to Sarah Solomon from Calvary, but out yes. our, out, down your way, we, we got the Barwon, um, Barwon Clinic and full mm -hmm. of amazing, amazing people in, in, yep. in the MND space. And next week, we, we're actually talking yeah. to a few of them. And I, and I think they'll be tuning in um, tonight to have a listen yeah. to you. They, they were pretty keen. So well, how about you talk yeah. what, what the Barwon um, Clinic have done for you and I guess in conjunction with Ruth as well. Mm. There's a bit of a you know, good thing. Yeah, well, there. Ruth sort of set me up to head down to uh, the Barwon Health being it's closer to, to my home straight down the freeway and Jeanette Wallish um, sort of has been taking care of me as well um, in, from the, I suppose, the the uh, admin side of things and setting me up with appointments and, and what have you. Uh, I've been down there twice now and um, Dr Paul Talman is my neurologist down there, wonderful gentleman, very smart. Um, uh, and the occupational therapist, um, physio, the dietitian, you know, the social worker, uh, the, a team of people. I didn't realise there was so much support. Um, I, I, I didn't even, yeah. And to have a specialist like that, that deal with neurological conditions like MND, like MS, and there's a whole umbrella of these things as well. So it's not just MND people they deal with, it's, it's a whole range of people but to have someone sort of understands the disease and can talk to you in terms that you understand is really good. And they are helpful in the, I suppose, the, the space of telling me what I have to do and what I don't have to do. You know, um, the pretty much, you know, the best news I got was when she, so I asked about uh, food, you know, if you want it, eat it. <laughs> there's no dietary requirements with this you know so that's great for me um but you know the knowledge um was 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 what i got a lot out of um i like i said i knew nothing about mnd yep. until i think i actually did get down to ruth and barwin and, and those sorts of people there to explain what it was what's going on with it and where we are with it. Um, I've had a couple of tele conferences with Paul as well. And I've got another telehealth conference with him next week, I think. Um, so yeah, there are, I can't wait to get actually back down there again to say good day to everybody. So uh, <laughs> having this sort of lockdown has been a bit hard on everybody. I understand that, uh, the timing was, 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 was rubbish, but you know, we're, we're all sort of learning to do something different now. Um, so this is just another little hurdle to get over. So, but we'll come out of it better, I'm sure. And look, just the fact to hear that, you know, you're so keen on on seeing these specialists, you know, a lot of people mm. would, would hate the idea of seeing the specialist in this situation. But I think that's a credit to everyone involved in the M&D space. And, I can't do this by myself, mm. you know, and I'm not, too proud to admit that either, you know. Um, I need that help, and yep, they're the yep. experts, you know. So, yeah. and you know, you, obviously, yeah, no face to face in the last you know couple of months. But yeah. I think you were telling me earlier that you, you still had all your services, and and today yep. you may have had something delivered. Yep. Yeah, yeah. we had a had a um, we had the 
the M&D people uh, had a, uh, a wheelchair turn up today. I sort of, you know, I can still walk around. That's all good. Um, the wheelchair is so I can actually get out and do a bit more than I have been doing. My, my walking ability is probably 100, 200 yards. I'm a bit out of breath. Um, but being able to put my bum in a wheelchair and have my wife push me around, that's, that's aces. <laughs> so um, it doesn't limit me. Yeah. You know? So I don't have to just, you know, she's going to go somewhere. And I think to myself, oh, it's a bit of a chore to, to go because it's going to involve a bit of walking. At least now I can do that. So it, it's not a concern. Uh, if it's going to make my life easier, her life easier, and we can do things together, why not? There's a pool of equipment that M and D Victoria have at their disposal. It's there to be used, and I'm using it. So I love it. You, you can go on longer treks than you've ever well, been on before. Now that that's right, and then you know, <laughs> annoy myself, my wife, too much. She can just push me down a hill or push me somewhere and just leave me. Whatever she wants to do. Yeah, you still have to behave. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. Still <laughs> have to behave. So yeah, if that's turned up today, so we actually went down to. Um, where we South Beach and gave it a bit of a test drive. So, yeah, it was really good. So, um, beautiful. With that bit more of a test out over the weekend, we've got a couple of little trips we're going to plan on, go and see some people, and yeah, we'll chuck that in the back and take that with us. There you go. Awesome. And well, I, I thought, you know, good segue into um, the fundraising you and the team at Cummins have undertaken. And that's, that is how I first um, met yeah. you. And it was a simple, um, Leslie sort of mentioned um, what you'd been doing and what you meant, what you spoke about, yeah. Leslie, in that first meeting. And, and I know you walked out of our office um, with, a, with, some, with some merchandise. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think I'll let you expand on where the fundraising um, has, has gone to. Um, yeah, I wanted to... I felt like I want with all the help and assistance that I've been given. It was be nice to, to try and give some of that back. And having worked for a company for as long as I have, and you know, Cummins Diesel is, you know, I can't say enough about the my second family. You know what I mean? The people I work with at my facility, and the head office people, and even all the people around. South back, you know, it's just overwhelming and humbling the support that they give me. You know, it's a global company, but you know, you just feel like a nice small part of the family. Mm. We had a lady that that work who wanted to sort of front run a fundraiser for M and D um, for me. Came and uh, had a few ideas that she wanted to do. So we were going to do a um, a monthly auction one day. A one one month was an auction. Morning tea. There was a barbecue. Um, a bogan bingo night. And we were going down to Geelong to do the run or the walk. I think it was it got cancelled. So there was something we were going to do every month until the end of the year. And we set ourselves a target of twenty thousand um, dollars. That was at about after I sort of slapped it around on Facebook and Messenger and, and started making some phone calls and telling people to empty their wallets and purses. Uh, again, there was a lot of hard conversations with a lot of customers that I've known for the same amount of time as I've worked with Cummins, um, telling them what was going on. And, and I understand it sort of, it, it hits them hard as well. Not only me, but their friends as well. So I did, it sort of felt funny, not, not guilty, but I was trying to make a bit of light of it with them, you know. Yeah. So, yes, I've got this, but don't be tight. Give me your money. So, um, being uh, so, well, like I said, we're at, uh, it's just over fifteen thousand dollars at the moment. Yeah. And you know that's 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 really good, and it's humbling as well to know that you know there's 120 people have donated, and I know every single one of them. You know, yeah. it's, it's really nice. It's there's a lot of caring people out there who I've obviously made a connection with over those years. Um, so if I can leverage on on that to help M&D Victoria 
with some funding so that you guys keep doing what you do and do what you do so well, which I've seen firsthand, you know, more power to you. And if I can help do that, then, hey, more power to me. You know? I might just let you keep speaking. This is perfect. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, I, you know, that run sheet we spoke about, I haven't really sort of read too much about that. But like I said, once I sort of start talking, um, you know, it's, it's everything I've said to people anyway. So it's no, it, it's not just for, I'm not just saying because it's scripted and nothing, nothing like it's just from the heart and it's, it's meant, you know, so um, well, it's like I said, I couldn't do it without you, you guys as well. So to know that there's a group of people out there that support M&D sufferers, mm. albeit a small number of people, if you weren't there, geez, I'd hate to be doing this alone. It would be really, really hard, you know. So a good group of friends, a good group of family, peers, work colleagues, make it easy. I'm just going to go back a step here. You, you sort of hit fast forward over it, but you and your team there at Cummins have raised fifteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and that's you, you had a month, um, month by month schedule of fundraising events that have all been cancelled or put on hold because of COVID nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you still managed to raise fifteen thousand dollars. So I think that's a massive yeah. credit to to you as a person, and 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 you obviously have some really great and generous friends and family. So definitely, um, yeah. and where, companies as well. Yeah, you know, there's a, a lot of customers and companies in there. A couple of companies just donated a thousand dollars, just like that. You know, no questions asked. So, um, you know, yeah, and, and you've it's said a hard you've, time to raise money at the. At the mm-hmm. You know, but um, we're going to get there. And you said it yourself that, you know, this sort of fundraising, you, you know, we can't um, provide our services without it. You know, all the community fundraising that people like yourself and, and you know, friends and yeah. family of, of other people mm. diagnosed with MND or, or are living with MND. And, yeah, um, yeah it's, you know, I wanted to have the job that I do that, to get to work with people like yourself that yeah. not only are you living with, such a horrible disease, but you know, your one one of your first thoughts was to give back, and yeah, it, it's a pretty, it's a very very special. I, mean, thing. Uh, I thank you and um, your team around you. Yeah, the, it's 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 it is really good. I, I don't feel alone at all, mm. and it's one of these conditions where you could easily feel isolated. It's not a good choice of words there, considering the climate we're in, but um, you know, and uh, but you have this. COVID-19 sort of strike as well, you know. 2020 has been a been a bit of a tough start for a lot of people, you know. So yeah. you can only get better from here. We can only hope. That's um, it. And just very, very quickly, and I know you're, you're not not new to the fundraising world, and, and I think this is where your team around you, um, comes at Kate and Mark, I think. Yes, um, yes. You know, you'd been raising funds for, for another cause well before this, and um yeah i think you're really well known um we 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 did a we did um very special kids yeah the treadmill challenge for that the that's the end of life care for for zero to 18 year olds it's yeah you know it's we were doing a treadmill challenge 24 hour treadmill challenge um no good for me at the moment but (laughs) but yeah we sort of have a community involvement team within globally and we do a lot of work around the world in that space as well. Yeah. You know, this is just one of those um, that has sort of hit home with a lot of people at work and yeah. it's sort of a personal one for them to do from a branch perspective. And yeah. to have someone like Kate kick it off um, with the support of everybody, you know, it's, it's awesome to have someone like that front runner because I probably wouldn't know where to start but if they can use me as a you know, test case and go for it sort of thing, yeah, so I'm happy to. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to bring that fundraising up because it really you know, sums you up as a person. And, and I think to have um, those around you at Cummins now wanting to fundraise, um, not only to support you, but to support all Victorians um, living a similar life is, is really, yeah. really cool. Um, but yeah, yeah I think we've, Fundraising one is one thing, but yeah. tell me about 
your future plans? You know, we, we've got six months in today um, yeah. from that diagnosis day. What, what do you hope to achieve for the rest of 2020? Hopefully when we come out of isolation, besides uh, taking your wife to all sorts of new and oh, exciting yeah. places that you can be wheeled yeah. around, but. Um, yeah, obviously it'll be going somewhere where it's wheelchair friendly. So um, it'd be nice to, once they find a cure for COVID-19, let's start working on the cure for MND. <laughs> um, look, I, I, I just want to get back out and see friends and family. Mm. I want to, you know, I've got a, a mother in Mount Gambier. She's 80 years old. Yep. And my older brother in Adelaide. That's the only family I've got left um, from my side. So, you know, they're a long way away and the border's been closed. It's hard to, I haven't caught up with them since Christmas. Uh, so as soon as the borders are open, I'm going to do a bit of a trip to South Australia and catch up with them. Um, would be nice. So uh, see how they're going and, and catch up with my little nieces as well. Yep. Um, so, and that's, you know, I understand that the, the, the fear and the concern that my immediate family have as well and how they're dealing with it to sort of adult adolescent sons. You know, and even my wife trying to, I suppose, compensate, count, you know, figure out what's going on. How, what's, how's it going to impact her later on? Um, what's the level of care she's going to have to provide for me? We don't know. It's unknown. There's no rule book for this. I'll wake up tomorrow and worry about it then. Yeah. You know? So I'm not getting ahead of myself. And that's the, that's the key to this is just one day at a time. And it took me so, it took me months to realise that. But it's true. One day at a time. And then it's not easy, but, you know, you just got to, the sun comes up tomorrow and I'll worry about it then, you know. Yeah. So it's, I don't get too far ahead of myself anymore. You definitely don't. That, that's the attitude that I've oh. known from you since day one when I, when I had the opportunity to meet you and, um, yeah, to see that uh, yeah. is something that you'll carry on um, with you for as long as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yeah, for sure. Obviously, you yeah. have a great, great network and great family around you. Um, yeah, I do. Yeah. Touched on it's certainly really, really tough yeah. for, for your immediate family and, um, yeah. you know, it can be just as tough. And that's something a lot of people probably don't realize that yeah. um, the impact that MND has on you does sort of branch out to well, it touches a lot of other people as well absolutely it does so you know it's not always about me even though it's sort of centered on me it's it's got a bit of a a, a spiderweb effect on others as well so you know it's worrying for them i'm sure you know like i said i'm a father and a friend and a husband and you know so they're all sort of you have thoughts going through their brain as well as how am I going? What's going on? But, you know, my boys are, are pretty good. It's same old dad business as usual sort of thing. And and that's another thing is, you know, I'm, I'm not contagious. You know, uh, same old, same old. Um, treat me the same. Just normal. This is just a new normal for me. Yeah. Um, no one's tiptoeing around. I'm still getting, you know, people hanging crap on me. That's good. I love it. <laughs> I'm sure you give it back twice as well, hard. Well, I do. Absolutely, I do. And that's that's how I function. So um, it makes me feel normal. And that's another thing. As much normality as I can instill in myself, mm. that's a big, big chunk of, you know, weight off my shoulders as well. So it gives me a bit of a respite from thinking about MND. Yeah. Whereas once upon a time, it was just consumed 20 hours a day, seven days a week in those early days. Now... Not so much, you know. Look at other things. Uh, I reckon that's a, a pretty good place to to leave it tonight. And yep, um, you know, I've seen a fair bit of commentary coming through on Facebook, and it it all really sums up, you know, what an amazing person you are. And there's a lot of people really thankful um, that you have shared your story tonight. Um, Look, yeah. I'm um, I'm more than happy to do this again if you if you want to, you know, come back in another three or four times or you know visits and have a bit more of an update i'm happy to to sort of keep sharing if you want 
the way you've spoken tonight, we might call it Zooming with Dan and Dave. What do you think? Oh, there you go. Uh, you soon get sick of my voice. Not at all. Not at all. Um, appreciate the opportunity. No, th thank you. Um, yeah, absolute privilege to speak with you. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, you know, I look forward to staying in touch into the future and right. you keep living that best life possible. I will, mate. Appreciate the, the time. Thanks again. Thanks, Dave. And thanks, everybody out there. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.